Hey everyone, welcome to the Illustrious Gentlemen. It's a podcast where Scott Godleski, my partner, and me, Ryan Cody, two professional comic book artists, we talk about comics and booze and life and working freelance and uh, all sorts of stuff, family, all sorts of stuff. So this is uh, our new intro for our Chaser episodes, which are our shorter than normal episodes. Uh, Music is still by Gray Watson, so I hope you enjoyed that. Now you might be asking yourself, why, Ryan? Why is this a Chaser episode? This is because, once again, I had problems with my audio two weeks in a row. So I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to have to look into fixing it. So this week we're going to have a couple different segments. Um, I'm going to talk with Scott about some comics we've recently bought. I'm going to talk with Scott about uh, Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, just it's, it's it, Thanksgiving is hard for freelancers. It's hard for us to, you know, it's... For me, if I'm I'm traveling this year, so I'm, I got to leave my house at in the afternoon on Wednesday, and I won't be back probably to my desk until maybe Friday, maybe Saturday. But even then, I'm spending time with like my wife, and I'm spending time with you know family and stuff like that, in laws and stuff like that. So it's not like I can work in that. So I essentially lose like five days of work. So we kind of touch on that a little bit and how if we were better freelancers, we would uh, schedule accordingly. But we're not, so we didn't. Um, so yeah, we talk about that, you know, Thanksgiving is not, for me personally, I'm not a big Thanksgiving guy. I always lived when I was growing up, we, most of the time we lived, you know, states away or, you know, continents away, separated by an ocean from my family. So I don't remember, I don't have, I don't have a lot of memories of like huge Thanksgivings where every year everyone would get together, aunts, uncles, that kind of thing. So it just never became that big of a deal, I guess for me. Um, so it, it, I don't, I don't look forward to it. It's not like something I don't not look forward to it, but I don't look forward to it. It's nothing special. Uh, so yeah, I just go, you know, I go to my in-laws house. They make a great spread. We hang out, watch TV, eat some food, drink some beer. It's, uh, it's a pretty easy day. Uh, but it is, it is a kick in the pants when you have deadlines or you want to, you know, it's so close to the end of the month. You want to bill, you want to finish projects so you can bill for them. Uh, before the end of the month so yeah it's just kind of a kind of a pain in the tuchus as they say on other podcasts so uh yeah so i did um when we recorded this it was monday morning because of problems last week uh so scott never drank or he wasn't drinking because he's a professional he's a professional at being a professional i'm a professional uh borderline alcoholic so i was drinking so i got the Trader Joe's Vintage Ale. Let me pull up my notes here. Drink it down in one breath. Drink, 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 drink. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, lift your sign and drink your beer. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, lift your sign and drink your beer. I got the Trader Joe's great email notification. Uh, Trader Joe's Vintage Spiced Ale 2019 made by Unibro. Unibrow. Uh, 9%. Got it at Trader Joe's, obviously. It was $5.99 for a full-size bomber. Um, I think you can get them at all Trader Joe's, so that's cool. Uh, so it's like a spiced winter ale. Uh, the problem is the Belgian in the title. It's like a Belgian spiced ale or something. So... Anyways, uh, I did pull up some uh, Beer Advocate review. So here you go. This is Oberon on Beer Advocate Theater. Mild phenols and a spiced cake element in the nose. Quite dry with not a lot of sweetness to it. A real smooth, creamy feel. It glides down easy and is on the fuller side. Not very sweet on the palate, somewhat earthy with warming spice and a nuttiness detected. Has a holiday feel to it pretty well made so thanks oberon from new gods wasn't he like the janitor or the nanny the manny i think he was the manny in the new gods so yeah that's what i'm drinking enjoy today's uh segmented podcast a chaser episode and i'll wrap up there at the end with what i think about this delicious or not delicious uh beer that i am drinking thanks for listening everyone buckle up enjoy So Scott and I both kind of picked up comics last week, which is normal for me and abnormal for him. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to what I picked up. We both do. 
Uh, I picked up, um, what did I get? I got The Ride, two issues of The Ride, which is by uh, 12 Gauge Comics and Image Comics. And I really picked it up because I was looking for something else to grab because I think I only grabbed one issue of something. Shoot, I can't remember what it is now. Oh, it was Excalibur number two with a great uh, Captain Britain cover. Uh, so that's good. I'm digging Excalibur. I hope it uh, it's not 100% for me yet, but it's, it's getting there. I like it. Uh, I'm a sucker for Excalibur. It was the first comic I ever picked up on the reg uh so uh, i love captain britain in all forms uh psylocke or sorry betsy braddock captain britain is right up my alley i'm into it um but the ride uh was interesting because i've read it before it's always had great art uh cully hamner um brian stelfreeze adam hughes those kind of guys so this this new mini series or i guess it's almost done but i picked it up as back issues from a couple months ago um, the art intrigued me. It's a guy I didn't know anything about before, Damon Hilliard, or Daniel Hilliard, Hilliard. sorry man, uh, Daniel Hilliard, Hilliard. Uh, it's really great. It's kind of a mix between like a Cory Walker, um, as Scott mentions, as Scott name drops in a little bit, uh, Wilfredo Torres, um, kind of like a clean, just really aesthetically pleasing style to look at. Um, and then each issue has backups too, so I bought the first two issues. The first one has an Adam Hughes backup, which you know can't go wrong there and the second one has a backup by uh, chris bruner and rico renzi uh two great guys and two great creators so you can't really go wrong there either so um recommending that check those out if you're into good art scott why don't you take it away with the comics that you recently bought they're the walmart exclusive giant issues so i've got 200 pages of batman and flash for ten dollars they're five bucks a piece, 100 page giants. Yeah, you can't really beat that price, even if it's not all new stories. 100 pages for five bucks is a good deal. I don't know. It, it comes with two exclusive stories in each one. So you're only getting them in these things. Um, the first, okay, I bought the Flash one first because I like Flash and it was there at the register. And I, I am not familiar with Clayton Henry, but I really like him. Like, I'm I'm super impressed. Yeah, I feel like I know his name from some Valiant stuff, like Archer and Armstrong, or some some Valiant stuff I've seen his name in. Yeah, I'm sorry, Clayton. I know, I I'm just just becoming familiarized with you, bro. And uh, you're good, man. I went and checked out his Twitter, and I saw some progress things he was doing. This whole story on Procreate on his iPad, it looked great. It, it's it's sort of uh. Yeah, it's got a sort of Stuart Eminem, uh, Wilfredo Torres, uh, uh, Scott Collins sort of vibe to it. I really dig it. Ramon Villalobos does the second exclusive story. And then there's some vintage Francis stuff. Francis Manipool. uh, Some other thing. Oh, I like this guy too, though I'm not really familiar. Otto Schmidt. There's a Green Arrow story. Otto Schmidt's stuff is great. I'm a fan of his uh, Instagram and uh, the stuff he posts on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, I think he's done a lot of Green Arrow stuff in the past. And now he's moving on to the new, uh, oddly enough, the new Hawkeye miniseries or the new Hawkeye series at Marvel. So uh, he's kind of like the archer artist, I suppose. Yeah, and then some uh, Cully at the end. Cully Hammer. Yeah, and then, I mean, this Batman one has got uh, two exclusive stories. Uh, Ryan Benjamin does the first one, does a Batman story. I haven't seen Ryan Benjamin in forever. Oh, Ryan Benjamin of uh, Phantom Guard fame from Wild Wildstorm back in the 90s. I dug that shit. Yes, Phantom Guard. Uh, Tom Mandrake does the second one. It's a Batwoman story. And then you get... Uh, a Snyder and Capullo reprint. Uh, Neil Neil Gouge does a Harley Quinn story. I'm not familiar with you, Neil. I'm sorry. I think he might have been one of the Guy Jean Studio guys from back in the day, but I could be completely wrong about that. And then there's a, a Nightwing thing to wrap it up. I, I'm sure I'm not going to read that. I just got them kind of just to get them, just to get comics. I think it's a super value. When people ask me what my favorite holiday is, by default, it's Thanksgiving. 
I don't know. It's it's fine. It's great. Uh, when I was a kid, it was great. When I was a working stiff in an office, it was great. But now, now I now I lose two days out of my work week when I'm on deadline, and I hate everything. But eh, I just hate everything, so it doesn't matter. We're gonna. I'm gonna go to my mom's house. Right, and I'm gonna get there, and food's not gonna be ready when it's supposed to be ready, and then they'll be waiting, and they'll be sitting around, and they'll be watching a shitty football game, and then it'll be six hours later, and I'll be, and my brain will go, six hours. You could have finished a page and a half in those six hours, and now that's six hours of work that you're gonna have to find. On a different day now. But whatever. I mean. A a responsible. Mature. Professional. Would find. Those six hours. Prior to having to do this. This would. Thanksgiving. This the whole thing. The weekend would be part of the schedule. But I'm not that. Right. This is like in an ideal world, you'd have like a mobile setup that you could just quickly boot up and work for 10 or 15 minutes between, you know, helping people with food and stuff like that. Like I don't, I don't have a mobile setup that really works at all. My computer and my, or my laptop and my bamboo are way too old. So I don't have any way to work outside of my main kind of station, my desktop and my 19 inch Huion. I, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking now about an iPad. I've got the, uh, you know, I've got the Companion 2, and I fucking murdered the screen on it. Change your nibs, kids. And, uh, so I could I could send that in, and it's like 600 bucks or something to get the screen replaced. But then, the, I, I feel like the thing is it's cumbersome, just the size of it. It's not, I mean, the the idea is nice, but it's not super mobile. But when I was using it to draw on, it's got a 13.6 or whatever fucking screen. And I always thought that was kind of small and uh, kind of constraining and claustrophobic feeling. So I don't know. Could I uh, draw on something that big? I mean, I guess if you have the zoom in, zoom out option, you just really need to lay shit out. And, um, at, at like a full screen size, you just didn't need to make sure everything's proportionate and then placed where you want. And then you can zoom in. It always bothered me not to be able to see the entire page when I worked. That was the thing. It looks like, uh, they, they make a 12.9. That's not nothing, but that might still be too big. Like to to comfortably carry around. All right, back to uh, back to Thanksgiving. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Do you have to cook, or what are you doing? What's your normal Thanksgiving ritual? Yeah, uh, I I typically go somewhere. So my mom just bought a new house way out in the in the North Valley. Uh, so we're going there, and yeah, it, every year really I just make a I make green bean casserole every year. That's my jam. That's my thing. So I'm good at green bean casserole, egg salad, uh, and that's about it. Those are the things that I do. Yeah, at uh, at our Thanksgiving with my in laws, I don't really do anything. They kind of do everything, um, but like at family functions with my parents and stuff like that, I'm always for some reason in charge of the mashed potatoes because I leave some skin on, leave them a little chunky, a lot of butter, uh, that kind of thing. But yeah, it's uh, I don't make much, and then you're just you know it's just it's just everything. It's just kids running around, small talk, all sorts of uh, that kind of stuff. I don't know, like uh, it's just. It, it it's tiresome and fun at the same time, I guess. There are a lot of people there, like uh, aunts, uncles, cousins, sisters, that kind of thing, like uh, nieces, nephews, that kind of thing. I don't know, 14, 15 max usually. More than half of it's kids, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's supposed to be rainy and cold down here, so they're all going to stay inside this year. Oh, yeah, you get like uh, lots of small talk, 
Lots of kids running around. That's what you get with big groups like that. Like I'm pleasant enough. If if somebody sits down and talks to me, I will humor them. I won't add anything of my own, but I'll sit there and say, "Oh wow, huh? How about that?" I just I recycle those three responses over and over. Yeah, same here. It's like uh, all you do is talk about work, talk about the weather, or talk about someone who's been sick or something like that. It's just always sort of there's an odd formality to sort of family Thanksgivings, at least. At least in my case, I suppose. Adults ask me about work. Like, every time I see my dad, he asks he asks me how the books are. Like, my mother-in-law used to ask me about my cartoons. How are your cartoons? Well, I guess that's better than, than me. No one ever asked me anything. Not my kid. No one, no one asked me about my work. No one. They happily do not care. Every once in a while, one of my kids will be like, Hey, Dad, can I take one of your comics to school tomorrow to show my friends? Because they all think it's really cool. And I'm like, yeah, of course. And then nobody ever actually takes a book or asks me again. Nobody follows up on that. No, no one cares. All right, we got a we got a mailed in. This one actually mailed us a letter with a question. It's Susan from Nebraska. She would like to know, Scott, what is your favorite dish? What's your favorite thing to eat at Thanksgiving? What do you think is best? Thanks, Susan. We'll mail out uh, no prize to you right away. Uh, it's never the turkey. The turkey's always blah like turkey turkey by nature is boring but then when you cook it to be like all dry and nasty then it's it's just it's it's totally unappealing so usually i go i'll go for a roll my green bean casserole some sort of potato something or other that somebody has brought either like a like a scallop potato thing maybe it maybe it's some sort of hopefully buttery chunky skinny potato salad sort of thing or mashed potatoes whatever what else oh the cranberries uh cranberries are always nice oh not the gelatin garbage but typically like the 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 meat the turkey is the most disappointing part of of thanksgiving dinner everything around it is usually better but what can you do with a turkey yeah, like you shove the stuffing up in it or something, and I see like the 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 injector things you can you can shoot up your turkey with butter and that sort of garbage. It seems so weird. Yeah, I agree. I'm always kind of torn because I really like stuffing or dressing wherever you're from when you say those things, and it's just like uh, the th- like I want it cooked i don't want it cooked in the bird like that just is gross that you're cooking like moist bread inside the anus of a fowl i mean I'll, i'd eat the fuck out of it but just thinking about it, it's disgusting and and i'm a i'm a simple cretin so i'm like a stovetop guy S- sodium junkie yeah yeah stovetop's the shit you gotta really cook it so it's got a nice crust on it that's how i like my that's how i like my stuffing uh yeah, this year this year's gonna be a little a little odd. I think we're driving home afterwards, so I can't really booze all day like I normally do. Um, that's gonna be a a new challenge for me this year. Uh, it's just, it just even just thinking about it's exhausting. So unless I'm mistaken and I can, and unless my eyes aren't working properly, it seems to me like you've done nothing for the last like six seven minutes except Google shit. I assume you're googling um, work things and not focusing on our turkey related topic. <laughs> I have. I, I've been Googling iPad Pros. They're expensive. I don't know. There's a refurbished 10.5 inch uh, for $352.49. It's in very good condition. Minor scra- scratches and stuff. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. There's also uh, an 11 inch. I guess that's only a half inch more refurbished for 583 well, as you damn well know, a half an inch can make all the difference. Well, if you know how to use it, that's right. You should go hang out at the uh, the Genius Bar and just like uh, sit there and like draw a page. Go hang out there for like six hours and just draw a page or something to just to make sure that it's going to work for you before you drop all that money. Yes, I I feel like before I pull the trigger on anything, I need to go to the Apple Store and put my hands on something and fuck around and see how comfortable it is. See how well those uh, dainty little screens hold up to your uh, chicken scratch, uh, heavy-duty, heavy-handed uh, way of working. Oh, I grind, man. 
I hurt my hand. I hold I hold the stylus so tight that I hurt my hand. Yeah, you need to make sure you get something that's that that works for you. Like this Huion I have, it's got a super like slick screen, like just glass. I've never it's, it looks brand new. There's not any scratches on it. It looks like I haven't even been using it for two years. I'm really uh really happy with my like four to five hundred dollar purchase from a couple years ago. My the Wacom, the big one is fine. I don't have a screen protector on it or anything. It the the surface is silky smooth. And it's great. I haven't changed the nib as long as I've used it. Because the nib's not wearing, it's just gliding along. It's it's whatever matte surface they used on that companion just invited me fucking it up. Yeah, the slick surface is the way to go. I love it. I, I love that smoothie s- s- that you just oil it up and just rub all over it. All right, and I'm here to wrap everything up. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. I want to give a shout out to everyone who came by Samurai Comics last Saturday in Mesa, Arizona. I sold some original art, which is always my favorite thing to do. Uh, shot the shit with some listeners. Uh, it was just a great time. I think uh, I want to thank all the creators that were there. Um, it was just it was great to see, you know it's always fun to hang out with other friends that are creators. I think everyone did well. Everyone made some money. Um, everyone should go on Twitter and check out uh, La Mano Comic. Uh, my buddy Jason Gonzalez just finished wrapped up uh, issue six of his creator owned series La Mano del Destino. So check that out if you want to read the entire arc. It's available now. So thanks for listening once again. I'm gonna give this Trader Joe's vintage spiced ale uh just a two and a half it's got a little too much of belgian in it for me like i don't mind the spice like i have a german beer in there that's like a spiced winter ale in my fridge that i really enjoy this just has something it's anytime belgians in the name it has a smell to it that i can't stand but it is nine percent and you do get a giant bomber with a cork top for 5.99 and it's available everywhere so uh, I'm going to give it credit for being available and strong. So uh, two and a half uh, out of five. So uh, once again, you guys can support the show if you want at patreon.com slash show. You can get all the up-to-date stuff at tigshow.com. And you can listen to every episode, including our limited edition series, Mondays with Mando, where we recap The Mandalorian. And the only way that the two grumpy comic book storytellers could, um, those episodes are also available. They came out on Monday, obviously. Uh, so you can listen to every episode for free at Tig Sh- or sorry at anchor.fm slash Tig Show. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I wanted, even though we had uh, audio problems last, uh, this week, I wanted to get something out there for you guys. It would have been easy to just bail on it and just blame it on the holiday, but I wanted to put something out there as a way to say thanks for listening to the show, supporting the show. And uh, so thanks. Have a great holiday. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm.